Hello everyone, I am here with a story for you tonight. A new little book from Guidepost. It's just a sample book. Um, they are true stories that people send in. Um, it's called Miracle Mysterious Ways More Than Coincidences. And um, I read one yesterday called Music Lessons. And tonight I'm going to read a couple more. I might just finish the book. It's only might only have one or two more stories in it. Um, the first one I'm going to read is called Miracle Baby. And this one is by Paula Linneman from Chelsea, Michigan. A football spirals deep down the field. A strong young man running like the wind reaches out his hands just in time to grab the pass for a completion, maybe even a touchdown. That was the dream I had for the baby boy I was soon to have. My prayers for a healthy son. Now, though, everything was in doubt. My eyes froze on the ghostly sonogram of my baby on the monitor, a pulsing inside my tiny body. His heartbeat was strong, the body fully formed, complete and perfect, except for one small hole where a hole shouldn't be. This is where the stomach is pulsing up inside the diaphragm every time the child breathes, the doctor said. It shouldn't be doing that. I squeezed my husband Russ's hand. This was supposed to be a routine test. I could definitely see what the doctor was talking about. It was all I could see. We'll induce labor in the morning, the doctor said. The baby will need surgery immediately, but I'm afraid your child will never have the strength or energy of other children. There will always be a weakness in that spot near his heart and lungs. It's going to be okay, Russ said on the drive home, but in his eyes I could see he was as scared as I was. We spent the evening calling family and friends, begging for prayers. We'll put you on the prayer chain at church, people said. It was like sending out a spiritual SOS. Finally, there was nothing to do but go to bed. Russ and I prayed together hoping something had been amiss with the test or equipment. Something, Lord, please take my baby all right. Please make my baby all right. But there wasn't. Another ultrasound in the morning definitely confirmed the problem. I'm sorry, the doctor said. There is no doubt. We have to get this baby delivered and into surgery. Only the baby wouldn't cooperate. My contractions grew more frequent and painful. The wait was excruciating. I thought of all the people praying for us. Pray harder, please, I thought. I want my baby to be all right. The morning dragged on, past midday, then into evening. Russ stayed by my side. Just relax, he said. There are so many people praying for you. Just let it happen. I knew that. Why was God taking so long? All I could think about was the hole inside my son's chest. Just after midnight, my son's head emerged. He was out. I'd scarcely heard his cries before the doctor cradled my son in his arms and rushed him away. What if they can't fix the hole, I wondered. What if something goes wrong? I never even got to hold him. Try to get some sleep, someone said. We'll let you know as soon as we hear from the surgeon. I was groggy. Maybe it was just a few hours, maybe one. I lost track. When we met with the doctor, he appeared in shock. We didn't do the surgery, he said, his voice quiet. My heart pounded. Is our baby okay? I asked. What's wrong? He's doing fine, the doctor said. Just before the operation, the surgeon asked for an x-ray and, well, I can't explain this, but the hole is gone. It's just not there anymore. Someone will be here to, to take you to him soon. Congratulations. Then he was off. I could scarcely believe what I was hearing. The hole was there. I saw it myself. So did Russ. I stared at him. Was this a mistake? I didn't make it. It didn't make any sense. Tears of relief, tears of joy rolled down my cheeks. A nurse came in the room and asked if everything was okay. I'm just so happy about my baby, I said. 
He was supposed to have surgery. You're the mother of the miracle baby, the nurse explained. We just had a staff meeting about you. The doctor showed us all the ultrasound images of your son. He asked us what we thought. We all said the same thing. The baby needs surgery. Then he showed us the x-ray. We didn't believe him when he said no surgery had been performed. Everyone was just in awe. Miracle baby. That's what everyone said. Friends from all over called when we got home. Prayers had gone out across the country. A network of praying people answering our spiritual SOS from California to Florida. While I was in labor those 15 hours, something happened. Something no one, not even the doctors, could explain. And today, when I watch Michael take the field as wide receiver for his college football team, I remind myself that I am watching a miracle.